good in your heart tonight They're singing carols of joy and peace But you feel too far gone and too far out of reach Somewhere in your silent night Heaven hears the song Your broken heart has cried Hope is here, just lift your head For love has come to find you Somewhere in your silent night From heaven's height to manger low There is no distance, the Prince of Peace won't go From manger low to Calvary's hill When your pain runs deep, his love runs deeper still he has always loved you, child, and he always will. Somewhere in your silent night, heaven hears the song. Your broken heart has cried. Hope is here, just lift your head, for love has come to Good evening or good afternoon. <laughs> um, welcome to our wor worship service this Christmas Eve. Uh, on behalf of the staff of St. Paul Lutheran Church and School, I'd like to wish you all a very blessed Christmas. We begin our worship service as we sing uh, our first hymn, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God himself is present. We will come out to the Lord, and with humble hearts appear before him. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, and ask for his forgiveness. O oh God, on this holy day, we gather to celebrate the gift of Jesus, your answer to our problem of sin. You have provided for us what we need the most. Grant us your forgiveness as we confess all our sins by which we have offended you. May your forgiveness cleanse us, and may your spirit empower us to walk in your ways. Amen. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join in singing angels we have heard on high. You made us glad with the new yearly remembrance of the birth of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Lord and Savior, we may then with sure confidence behold him when he returns on the last day. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 through 14. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now your house of David. It is not enough to try the patience of men. Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and I will call him Emmanuel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we have loved God, but he has loved us and sent us his Son, an atoning sacrifice for our sin. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We join now as we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we join in singing What Child Is This?
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this evening is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You shall find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which they were told just as, or just as they had been told. On the eighth day, this is, our, this is our text. Tonight we pull out all the stops. We celebrate the birth of our Lord and our Savior. It's amazing to think about what miracle tonight really is. It's also amazing to think how God worked this miracle. You've heard it said that God works in mysterious ways. Well, God made a promise at the very beginning of creation, back when only Adam and Eve were here, and now that promise has been kept. Tonight, we celebrate the birth of God's gospel promise in the flesh. And let me tell you, it was brought about through some very unexpected and mysterious ways and some very dysfunctionally flawed and sinful people beginning in the Garden of Eden until finally coming to fruition in the manger in Bethlehem. If you look at Jesus' family tree, going all the way back to the Garden of Eden, we find a pedigree full of murderers, adulterers, prostitutes, liars, thieves, and all kinds of sinners. Jesus had a lot of skeletons in his family closet. There are the these are all the people that God used to bring that gospel promise, a promise which he first made in the Garden of Eden into the flesh, and blood, that is now Jesus Christ. And even as we examine all the events and circumstances surrounding Christ's nativity, we will still find so many flaws. It's not the beautiful, perfect, hallmark picture that, that we tend to imagine and, and gravitate towards. Jesus is born to a lowly teenage virgin girl. 
her fiance, a hardworking carpenter, finds out his bride-to-be is pregnant, and he's not the father. And he resigns himself to the fact that he needs to divorce her. And can you blame him? God intervenes, however, and prevents this from happening, but Jesus is born into this dysfunction and mistrust. And this is how God works his plan. We could also talk about how Jesus was born in a meager livestock stall, complete with livestock. He wasn't born in a fancy hospital. He wasn't even born in his own house. The Savior of the world is essentially born as a lowly subject under the Roman rule of the promised land, which at that time was occupied and overrun by pagan Rome. This prince of peace is born under the heavy hand and bloody sword of a pagan empire that excelled in bloodshed and warfare. He's born when Caesar is levying taxes against everyone under his rule. Now think about that. God used government taxation in order to get the lowly, dysfunctional, expecting couple to leave their midst in Nazareth and to travel south to Bethlehem, the ancestral home of Joseph. Now no one with a sane mind has ever, ever enjoyed being taxed. And yet Jesus' birth, as we still hear tonight, is forever associated with Caesar's taxation. In terms of association, I think it's kind of like being born on September 11th. This was God's good plan. We could talk about Bethlehem, the birthplace of Christ, which was by no means a bustling metropolis. Not a whole lot going on in Bethlehem. God's plan didn't include a noble birth in a noble place. And the first visitors to the Christ child, his first visitors are not top-tier uh, world leaders or celebrities coming to welcome the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. No, his visitors aren't even close family members, not even friends, but a couple of nomadic shepherds. And they didn't even count in terms of the taxation that was being taken by Caesar Augustus. How much lower can you get? The government didn't even bother with trying to squeeze taxes out of these guys or even counting them in the census. They just didn't count, and yet God fills the skies with angelic hosts to let these, no, these, these nameless nobodies know that they counted with him. God so loved even them that he sent his only begotten son into the world to fulfill his promise to deliver them from sin, death, and the grave along with all of us. Of all the people in the world to hear of the promise being kept, God tells the lowest of the low first. And he does so in grand angelic fashion. This was all part of God's plan. And here's the thing. We could talk about all these things and we could still wind up missing the point of this evening. Why did God command that Mary's baby be named Jesus. Why did God send Jesus to be born of a woman? Why did God send the angels to the lowly shepherds first? Answer, to save us from our sins. God sent his only begotten son into the flesh in order to save all of us who wear Adam's flesh. The name Jesus tells the whole story of why he came to this earth. He will be named Jesus because he will save his people 
from their sin. That's what the name Jesus means. He will save his people. Now Jesus was, um, uh, talk about missing the point here. Jesus is the reason for the season. That's kind of the, uh, the saying, I guess, the, the popular saying this time of year. But so many who champion this saying fail to draw the con connection to the whole reason why Jesus is the reason for the season. In fact, why he was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Jesus came to make full payment for each and every sin of each and every person of all of time. Paying that redemption price in full with his own flesh, bone, and blood. An all redeeming sacrifice that he made of himself on the altar that was his cross. This is why the Father gave his only begotten Son, that he might die for our sins in payment for them on the cross. Now, don't get me wrong, we can and certainly should point to the nativity of Jesus and, and joyfully pro profess. Here is God's promise in the flesh. Here is God keeping his gospel promise. But this is only half the story. Where does God's gospel promise of redemption and salvation find fulfillment? In the nativity or on Calvary? In the manger or on the cross? The nativity isn't the end of the story. It's certainly part of our salvation story, but it's not the whole story, nor is it a separate story. The nativity of Jesus is the first part of the story, the first step in a long and purposeful journey to Calvary for us and for our redemption. The peace that the angelic host sang about on that first Christmas finally finds its fulfillment and is only finally recognized in the wounds of Jesus Christ, which he himself held out to his disciples on that first Easter Sunday, showing them his wounds and declaring to them, peace be with you. I'm convinced that this is why Jesus and his ministry was and still is rejected by so many people, even some who dare to call themselves Christians. It doesn't fit the mold. It's not what we are were expecting. It's, it's not what we were looking for. No one would ever draw up a plan this way. If, and, and it doesn't matter if we start back in the Garden of Eden with our first uh, sinful parents or if we focus specifically on the life, birth, the birth, life, and death of Jesus. No one would ever draw up a plan like that. And yet, this is how God did it. This is our celebration tonight. The plan that God devised in Jesus Christ. Bringing him into our flesh that he might die for the forgiveness of our sins. Take a moment and close your eyes and let your faith uh, see for a minute. Look into that manger. Look at the manger itself. That's your peace. True peace peace. The peace that surpasses all understanding in the flesh. God has kept his word and he has kept his promise. Hosanna, joy to the world, look into that manger, behold how the wood of the manger holding that precious Christ child foreshadows the wood of the cross that will hold the Savior of the nations. Look and behold the swaddling clothes that infant Savior is wrapped in. Linens which foreshadow the fair linen that one day will enshroud his body as he's taken down.
from his cross and laid into the Sabbath rest in his tomb for you. Look with wonder as Gentile wise men later come from afar bearing gifts for their infant Lord, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They bring the timeless and precious treasure of gold for their king, but they also bring frankincense and myrrh, very precious commodities that carry a premium price, very precious commodities that were often used as burial spices for royalty. Think about that for a minute. These foreigners leave everything and travel from afar because they know what the scriptures say about the birth of the king of the Jews. Where is he who is born? They ask. They know what this birth means for them and for all people. They come to worship not a baby, but their Savior, God's promise in the flesh. They come to anoint him and prepare him for burial for the whole purpose that he came to this earth was to die for the sins of all mankind. This is God's promise and this is God's plan in action. And today we celebrate Dear children of God, look to that manger scene. But don't just look at that manger scene. For Jesus Christ doesn't exist in the past. Tonight isn't just remembrance or anniversary of an ancient historical event. It isn't just a birthday party for Jesus, which really does miss the point. No, tonight about giving thanks and rejoicing over the fact that you shall call his name Jesus. And behold, the virgin shall conceive bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. And lo, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Christ Jesus comes to us in these days too continuing to fulfill his promise to ever abide with us, nourish us, protect us, and deliver us. Look to him and hear him in his word. Look to that life-giving water that he pours out in holy baptism, where he washes away all the guilt of your sin and makes you his own, putting his victorious name upon your forehead and upon your heart, marking you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Look to the rail as he himself nourishes you, as he holds out to you his own victorious, life-giving body and blood for the forgiveness of all your sins. This is my body, he says. This is my blood. Here is present tense Christ Jesus very God of very God, given for you. Here is your gift of peace from God himself. The gift of peace that is God himself. When you look at that manger scene through the eyes of faith, you'll see all of this and begin to recognize it all for what it really is. For what God says it really is. And you can't help but rejoice with the shepherds and all the heavenly hosts. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. In the midst of all the brokenness and pain and suffering, in the midst of all the darkness and death and despair in this fallen and sinful world, here is Emmanuel. God with us. Here is Jesus, the infant conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, laid in the manger, who was later crucified, died, and was buried. 
descended into hell and rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven, all for the forgiveness of your sins and for our salvation. May this joy and peace of Christ Jesus, which does surpass all human understanding, be and remain with you all these Christmas days and all your remaining days until that blessed day when God's good plan for you is brought to completion in the resurrection of the dead and life everlasting in heaven with him, who is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A very blessed and Merry Christmas to all of you. Amen. At this time, of course, we would collect our offering, uh, but during these times, uh, as we know, uh, we are not able to do the collection, but hopefully you put it in there as you came in. If not, please do so on your way out. And for all who are not able to attend, we hope that you will remember to send in your offerings or make your offerings through uh, any of the electronic means uh, available to you. Let us then rise, uh, or let us then join in singing uh, Silent Night. for prayer. Let us pray for the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God Almighty, we come before you on this most holy night in awe at the wonder and majesty of the Incarnation. The Savior of the nations has come and with joy we greet our newborn King. Let the proclamation of his birth sound forth throughout the world. Give to your church faithful pastors to proclaim the good tidings of his birth and give to your people willing ears to hear and to believe. And bless all those who 
also share this gospel message throughout the world. All who serve as missionaries, Jana Engelhardt and Josh Lang and family included. Bless them and keep them always in your protective care. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. In the birth of your son, you have signaled the beginning of a new creation. While we still live in a world racked by the ravages of sin, we know that he, his final victory is yours. That, what, that you will watch over us and keep us safe uh, from all things. Watch over and keep safe all emergency workers and all whose vocations keep them from their families this evening for the well-being of our families, for all military personnel and their families, for all those who serve on police departments, fire departments and EMTs, and all those healthcare workers who must remain um, on the job. We pray your blessing be upon them and that you keep them safe as well. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. In the birth of your son, you have visited and redeemed your people. Continue to visit those who are lonely, sick, recovering, or near death. Let your presence be a comfort to them and give them perseverance until that time you grant healing, relief, deliverance, and peace. Especially do we bring before you Nadine Petrovsky, Kristen, Dylan, Gary Brunsbach, Pearl Abrahams, Elaine Trainer, Anselm Wimmer, Bob Anderson, Bill Berry, Judy Johnson, Mark Weiler, Heather Wopel. We ask your blessing be upon them, that you keep them in your protective care. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. In the birth of your eternal Son, one who is one substance with you, you visited mankind, and so your eternal Godhead is bound to the body and blood he gives us in the sacrament of the altar. Grant faith to all who receive this gift, that with their sins forgiven and love strengthened, they can serve their neighbor in joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the birth of your Son, you have called people of all times and places into the body of Christ that is your church. We give you thanks for all the believers who have gone before us, especially those who have been with us during Christmas's past and are now with you. Give us a sure confidence in your promise of resurrection and eternal life, and bring us at last together with them into your presence at the full coming of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. We have seen the glory the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. In him was life, and that life was the life of men. Our Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament for the forgiveness of our sins and everlasting life. We give thanks to you, Almighty God. And we implore you that in your mercy you would strengthen us to the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.